going into the semifinals, Jeremy, they are Saturday the 12th in Sumo Hall, Ryugoku Kakuchi Khan. And uh, then the finals the next day, the 13th. We only know the semifinal matches. They have not announced any of the undercard as of uh, when we went on the air. It's supposed to be a little bit later. So on the uh, the semifinals, Osprey will face Naito. And then we will see Okada facing Evil. So we mentioned that Evil doesn't need to win this thing. He's already got his title shot. So I fully expect Okada to go on to the finals. Osprey and Naito is a really interesting one. You know what? If you got that, pick him. I picked Osprey to win this tournament. I picked Osprey I'm too. Sticking with it. I also said when we were doing this that the only person that might upend this is that Tetsuya might make me nervous with Naito. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the only guy that makes me nervous. So I am nervous about it. I'm nervous yeah. about my pick. But I did have a final of Okada Osprey, which might still happen. I think it will. I don't you know. know. Like. Naito you know. hasn't been wrestling at the light clout level in the tournament that Osprey has, but I don't necessarily think that that's an indicator that Osprey is going to win the next match. But they did lean hard again into the one-year decree that Osprey had that he was going to be on top. They brought it up again, so it could either be leaning towards the tragedy or we are going towards the guaranteed Will Ospreay main eventing Tokyo Dome in 2024. Like it seemed like it was going to happen last year as well. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, Beck and Bjorn mentions, I don't think the final will be Osprey Okada. Didn't we just have that match recently? Yep. You had it in block play because they were in the same block. Mm -hmm. They could do it again under different circumstances, but yeah, you, you make a good point there. They, that's they that's the thing. If, like if you want to, if Okada, there could be a trilogy of matches with Osprey and Okada this year. And it could very much happen here, the match at the G1 and at Wrestle Kingdom. It's entirely possible. I don't think that's going to happen. Go ahead. Mm. Yeah. What, do you, what do you got? Well, well he mentions that I don't think we're going to get Osprey versus Okada. We can't even necessarily assume Okada is going to be in the finals right. because they might scare us all with the idea of evil winning this thing. You know, yeah. they, they could. You know, they could have some sort of. I said you need a bullshit. heal. You need yeah. a heel in this thing. They might. They might. And, and, and if, yeah. if he beats Okada and he beats Sonata, and then you get to the very end and it's evil versus Osprey or Naito, and this guy has run the table beating everybody of your favorites, that is exactly mm -hmm. the kind of narrative and nervousness that Ghetto loves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it could be that. You know, so let's make the case here briefly. We've got a few minutes left. For Okada to win the whole tournament, well, that would be history. Because no one's ever won it three times. And what? Only Chono has won it five times. So he could hit both of those marks. So that's kind of the argument so for Back Okada. to back to back, you mean three times back to back to back. Yeah, three in a row. Pardon me. Three in a row. He, he, he will have won three in a row at that point. That would be a record. They've already set records with him as far as title defenses during a title reign, for instance. So they've been building Okada up as an all-timer, because he is. But pushing that fact, too, that he's breaking records in terms of New Japan, and this could be another one for him. That's the case for Okada. The con for Okada is there are other matches that he could do with at the Tokyo Dome mm -hmm. that would have just as much interest. They could get back to, it would take a little work, but they could get back to Kiyomiya. There's also the possibility if Brian Danielson's arm heals, you could do that rematch there, and that could be a bucket list thing for uh, Danielson, and then you could also just have that incredible You could finally do Moxley and Okada. There's no reason that you couldn't do that either. It's it's unusual to go into a year where Okada doesn't have to be either the champion or the guy challenging the champion. Right. You can do other things with him, and I encourage them to do so because it's not a mid-card match. Like He could be basically a co-main event type of situation, any of those, if you put some steam on him, right? Especially the Kiyomiya thing. If Kiyomiya gets pissed off and finds a way to get under Okada's skin again. You could do that rematch. There's all kinds of things. So I'm leaning toward Okada not winning, and he might not win the semifinal. But there it is. There is a possibility there if they wanted to continue this whole thing of making Okada an all-time icon, they could they could make him the first person to get three G1s in a row. We mentioned Evil. Doesn't need to win it. He's already got his title shot coming. So I'm kind of dismissing him. I don't think he's going to win this tournament. So that moves on to Naito and Osprey. We mentioned Osprey with that 
statement he made after the Kenny Omega match where he's giving himself one year. Well, you don't have to do too much mental work to figure out that that means the Tokyo Dome next year. This is a way to be in the main event, winning this thing and rising to the top there as the the, the new top foreign guy, the new top baby face, as you said. So there's a strong case for Osprey winning this thing. The obvious for Naito is that at some point, Jeremy, they've got to do Sonata versus Naito for all the marbles after he leaves LIJ the way he did, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's the thing, thing about that's <laughs> the thing about this final four is that there's yeah. no obvious winner. No. Like if it wasn't Naito and it was Osprey versus somebody else, I would pick Osprey to go to the finals. But because yeah. it's Naito and because Sonata is the champion, and there is a story between Sonata and Naito to have some type of conflict, and now that Sonata's out of the tournament, potentially Naito could be out of the tournament, there might not be a belt on the line between those two. And that's Mm. also okay. Mm. Um, I just, the horizon is completely wide open. And we're going to have a lot more answers on Sunday about where everything is going and what we think. But right now, I am loving the uncertainty. And of course, the the other side is that Will holds the U.S. title, which also plants a seed of doubt because then, you know, there's no U.S. title match at the Tokyo Dome. Maybe not. You know, maybe, maybe, yeah. Did he say something about wanting to turn that back into the Intercontinental title? I didn't hear that. But, I mean, the, the U.S. thing hasn't really worked, has it? Because it doesn't get defended over here a whole lot. So, uh, he's yeah, too I, big I, of a star to be on the strong show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he certainly is. So, yeah, I mean, you can make a case for three of the four. Uh, Evil's yeah. the only one that doesn't really make sense because he sort of accomplished what he came to the tournament to get storyline-wise. So, but I could see him knocking out Okada just to keep Okada and Osprey from happening again. And to make the fans just think, please, no, dear God, no. Yeah. You know, so that, that would bring that kind of babyface heel dynamic, certainly to the final, no doubt about it. And of course, there's plenty of subtext still left between Evil and Naito, you know, having been former stable mates as well. So you can always bring that up. 